It's, it's a reflection, I, I think, as you said, that that is uh, you know evident when you look at this globally. I think that the index on aviation globally is uh, that um, shares in the sector are down some 40 percent pre-pandemic, and there's a difference also, of course, you know, depending on where in, in the world you are. I, I don't think it necessarily helps in in Europe when you have two wars going on in the proximity and partly also where we used to operate. We paused the flying into to Israel and Jordan as an example, and then there's a cost of living crisis. But but I do think that the, we're on the journey to to deliver strong shareholder returns, and I do think that that will be appreciated. Coming out of the pandemic, delivering a record summer, uh, we uh, accelerated the delivery on the midterm targets. We set out new ambitious targets as well, reinstate the dividends as well. All those things will clearly, you know, help. And I think that we're on the journey to start seeing a different ratings of the sector. But it has been tough for the, the sector, you know, across the world, really. Johan, I want to get a handle on the demand story and I'll pick up first on the winter comments, the impact from the Middle East. And it sounds as though you've now got some softness creeping into the numbers. We know typically that summer can be sticky, winter less so. And if there is any element of fading demand, this is the season we see it. So just how soft is winter looking at this point? Well, it's really interesting because when you're looking at the, the booking trend, it's actually almost identical to what we saw, you know, with the invasion in, in Ukraine by Russia. We had a short term impact, but after six to seven weeks, we saw that the demand was coming back quite strong. So if I'm looking at the daily sales now that we have, it's actually very, very strong. Now, there's been an impact, you know, very much in, in the short term, but it never affected the peak periods. For instance, next summer looks, you know, exceptionally strong, both from easy death holidays, which is a good barometer because they're out there early with their sales, but also for the airline. And I think in addition to that, the latest consumer survey that we did demonstrates now, this was done here in the UK, that three quarters of, of, of the people will spend more on holidays in 24 than it did in 23, which still had this record summer in there. And it is still the number one priority in what people want to do with discretionary spending in the household. So one, we don't see it. And two, that's not what the consumers are saying either. So I think that there's a near term impact on that, but it doesn't really go, go beyond the quarter that we're into right now. Johan, if we can just uh, piece together the supply and demand side here and what that means for pricing as well. We know that in recent uh, years there's been not as much capacity in the skies as there has been demand and that has meant higher prices. Are prices still going to be as elevated for summer next year? Well, look, if you choose EasyJet, which I'm sure you do when you're over here in Europe as well, you're always going to find, you know, attractive fares. Uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, 50% of everything we sell at the moment is still selling for below £50. Pounds and, and, you know, usually a bit more in, in euros. So we're always going to have attractive fares out there. But you're right that there's going to be a, a, a tighter... Uh, supply on the market for next summer. We see the issues with the with the OEMs and the Pratt and Whitney issue. If you're a customer of those, EasyJet is not affected by that. Uh, we have an all Airbus fleet. We have the CFM engines as well. So I think that from a network point of view, EasyJet is going to have the most growth into the next summer. Uh, if I'm comparing it to competitors who are affected by this, but that means that there will be a constraint on the supply. But I th think it's too early to tell what this will mean for for a pricing point of view. And I think that, you know, the recommendation still holds true. And it turned out that it is always true that if you're booking earlier, you can assure yourself of getting the best deals that is out there.